This video is not about the rising costs of electricity. However, if you've noticed in your part of the world, wherever you are, the cost of electricity is rising all the time. And I have some predictions on what I think is going to happen to the electric wholesale market and electricity tariffs over the next five years. In fact, I think this industry is going to completely change the way it works. And if you don't believe that, then you're wrong because we're already seeing some companies already change the way they charge us for energy and if you don't have a smart tariff then that's fine if you don't have a smart meter that's fine but you will be paying more than anyone else for electricity in penalties and fines by extra rate costs and today's video we're going to see how and why this may be changing sooner than you think now here in my home market here in the united kingdom we're going to see radical price change of over 50 percent pretty much overnight because we have a government system that controls the limit that our energy companies can charge us which we call the price cap so if a customer runs out of contract, rather than the energy company just defaulting you to a really ridiculously high rate, we have a cap price of the maximum they can charge you. And at the moment, wholesale costs are more than wholesale rates. A price crap means that people are actually paying less than the energy companies, which energy companies are not too happy about because they're losing money. But the price cap in April will increase by over 50%. Now, this means that across the rest of the Europe, they've already seen price increases going up. And I also believe our foreign friends over in America are also seeing price increases in electricity. And this is tied to a couple of things all around the world. Now, first of all, the UK's problem is as we move towards renewable tech like wind turbines and we see more stuff like solar going on the grid, there is a shortage of some power generation over here and that's because traditionally we used to burn a lot of coal and we're not burning any coal anymore we're instead burning gas and gas prices are the reason why cost of energy has gone up wholesale price of gas has gone through the roof here in the europe especially because of tensions over in ukraine now gas turbines do generate a little bit of electricity but it's not the only reason we're seeing increases here in the uk for example we have many 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 failing nuclear power plants that are past their age or failing and no new nuclear turbines or anything like that has been built for quite some time how is it in your part of the world let me know down below in the comments so how do we currently pay for energy in most places in the world well most people in the world have a set price per kilowatt hour it may be 20 pence or 30 cents depending on your currency per kilowatt hour so for every kilowatt hour you consume you pay that set price and that is pretty much the same for 24 7 7 days a week now in certain parts of the world in certain places you can have selective tariffs be that seven cheap hours of electricity or you might have a night and a day rate or you might have a week rate and a weekend rate for some people but that is quite common all over the world to have these different flexible tariffs but with the invention of smart meters we are now seeing more energy tech companies take advantage of half an hour billing systems so this is where the price can dynamically change every 30 minutes so octopus energy here in the uk they do half an hour so they do from half 12 till half four just a cheap set of 5p electricity which is instead of the traditional seven or ten hours of cheap electricity we used to get it's a short period four hours so they offer that at a cheaper price now at the moment that is 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour and the other times the peak rates are at a higher rate which for me in the area i live in is about 30.15 pence per kilowatt so they're incentivizing you to shift your your energy load your high load appliances like electric cars for example over to that off-peak energy now shifting our energy to half 12 and half four usually isn't that bad that used to be the times where we're all in bed asleep consuming less energy it tends to be you know when the grid has less demand on it but as we see more and more electric cars and renewable energy enter the grid that half 12 to half four might not be as quiet as the prices that we may want to pay for example we could see a day where there is not a lot of wind not you know not a lot of renewable energy or not a lot of generation on the grid between those times and more demand as people are filling up electric cars meaning that the, the power isn't that cheap anymore and renewable energy doesn't know 
when we're asleep. Wind could be really, really good during the middle of the day and demand might be low during that middle of the day. So we need ways of adapting energy to respond to the way renewable energy works, which is dynamically. Now, Octopus, for example, do already have a dynamic energy tariff called Agile, and the prices on that literally change every 30 minutes. And they publish those rates at 4 p.m., for the next day. So at 4 p.m. they publish the next day's rates and every day they republish the rates. And that is very, very adaptive and you can take advantage of some really cheap prices and sometimes you can be paid to consume some of that cheap energy off the grid. The problem is, if you're not tech savvy and you don't like apps, it's a nightmare. So what if you just want a single use tariff all the way through the day? Well, at the moment, that's what people are offered and that's what people will do if they're not interested in going for these more adaptive tariffs. Or some people might just go for the set, you know, set four hours, set seven hours, or set 10 hour cheap electricity windows, because it's easy to manage and it moves around your life. But what do I think is gonna happen on the future energy market? Well, in the future, I don't think any of these fixed four or seven or 10 hours windows are gonna be so fixed to the time they happen. I think they'll be more adaptive and move. And if you want to be on a 24 7 seven days a week pay the same price tariff and you don't want a smart meter and you don't want a smart you know way the way your electricity works there'll be staggered versions of tariffs for you so i think there'll be a tariff for people who have smart meters and the energy company can see your typical usage pattern so they know what typically you're going to use and they can predict your data better they'll offer you a set price of you know just for example say 50p a kilowatt hour and then there may be a rate for people with non-smart meters people who don't want smart meters and i think their set price will be double that maybe a pound a kilowatt hour so they'll pay a lot more for not having a smart meter because for the energy company it's hard to predict when you're using it how you're using it and how they can adapt to those loads that you you know predict a usage pattern for you so because of that they'll charge you more because they're going to have to pay more for your electricity but what's going to happen to adaptive tariffs? How are they going to make adaptive tariffs more useful for customers like you that maybe aren't that tech savvy and maybe don't want to keep working out when things are going to charge and not charge during the day? So I think at the moment there isn't actually a solution. There is no app, one app fits all. And that is because if you have an EV, you need an EV charger. And that EV charger might be able to deal with cheap energy. You might have a heat pump and a control system that can talk to when the energy's cheap. That's another app. Then you might have another app for your home battery storage unit. You might have a, another app for some other energy stuff that you have. You might have an app for your solar diversion system or your heat, you know, your heat tank for your hot water. They're all different apps. And the problem is people don't like having multiple apps. And to tell all these multiple apps to work in different things or work together is extremely complicated. So what I think is going to happen, in my personal mind, is we're going to see energy companies enter the world of being a service provider and an energy company. So I think they'll be offering a service where you sign up for a set rate, they give you a flat rate 24-7, or they give you a flat rate 24-7 with some you know, options to adapt to it. So in other words, they might say to you, right, your set cost for energy is going to be 20p a kilowatt so you know more than half of everyone else but you need to tell us what temperature you want the house at um when you're in the house and then that may they might say right well if you're in all day you pay 25p a kilowatt because your heat pump's going to be running for longer you'll tell them how many evs you've got so the more evs got slightly more per kilowatt you're going to pay and have you got solar have you got a battery and then that will feed into how much you're going to export how much you're going to not consume from the grid and this will again play into a tariff so everyone's going to have a, a slightly customized price and the way this will work is you'll tell the energy company in the energy company's app what temperature you want the house at uh, when you're going to be in what temp what uh, time you're leaving in your car what battery charge you want and this one centralized app will control the heat pump and know when to store energy when the grid is cheap and green. It will know when to charge your car because it knows when you're going out, what percentage you need, so it knows that. And it has 
an idea of how much solar you're going to export during the day based on the sun tariff and stuff like that. And if you have a battery, it knows if it can charge up some of that battery from your solar or from the grid when it's cheap. But it might also know that it can export some of your battery when the grid isn't cheap and that energy company can earn some money back from that. And I also think what we'll also see is not only all this tech connected in this manner, but we're going to see some form of grid response. So it might be that there's an unpredictable event on the national grid, either uh, extra demands, you know, a football game kicked off and more people use more energy, or a power plant went down, so they need to turn off a lot of demand in, you know, around the country to stop the national grid having blackouts. And I think what will happen is that your centralised app, which has control of all your home tech, may turn off your EV charger, turn off your heat pump, um, let, kick your battery into exporting some energy. And all this tech will mean that you'll be paid a credit at the end of your electricity bill every month. And I know it sounds crazy to think about your energy company having control of your heating, your car, your battery, your solar, and you not having full control over the way that's managed. But that is one way I see it going. There is another way that it might happen with the way we use energy. Now, the way we trade energy will kind of change. There will be ways of selling it to the national grid. The, you know, as in your energy company, you'll be paid a set so many pence per kilowatt. But the way energy is going to be changing is they're opening up the way the energy market works. So you might be able to say you want to sell energy to your neighbour from your solar roof. You might have a 10 kilowatt array you produce in the summer about eight kilowatts of solar and you might you'll might have a neighbor that needs three or four kilowatts during the day when he's working from home and you might be able to sell that energy sign a contract with your neighbor to sell that energy via those national grid wires from your house to their house and that's they'll just pay the fee that it costs for the length of wire from your house to their house rather than the full cost and that's more likely going to happen pretty sooner than we think. There's already mechanisms in the, the way the grid and power distributions work that are going to open the way energy trading is going to work in the UK. So we are seeing some of the signs that will allow people to do this. Now, whether it will be done as simple as, you know, speaking to your neighbour and trading energy with them, or whether it will be done through a way your energy company work as a service provider in the middle, trading energy with customers they know will live on your street. We don't really know what's going to happen, but we do know the way we're going to pay for energy in the future is going to change. Now, these are just my predictions in this video. I'd like to know what you think is going to happen to energy in the future. Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you very, very much for watching this video, and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.